team. So what did we learn from all of this? Well, nothing. We didn't learn a goddamn thing that we didn't already know in the first place. And honestly, I have to wonder why we are seriously revisiting this fucking nonsense when the Manosphere collectively explored, argued, settled on, and put this issue to rest damn near a decade ago. I mean, this is a video that Girl Writes What published all the way back in 2013, discussing a number of issues relating to Islamic relationships and gender politics. I want to play a few segments from her video. Now, what I find amusing in all of this, since in the West these circumstances only emerged due to feminist activism, is that Islamic law had enshrined these particular ideals of women's liberation long before the Declaration of Sentiments was signed at Seneca Falls, or even before Mary Wollstonecraft's vindication of the rights of women in the late 1700s. Now, one thing the Taliban didn't do was completely rewrite Islamic law pertaining to female privilege and male obligation. And this is the root of things, the way I see it. Afghanistan became a society where leaving your house was taking your life in your hands, and where there were few opportunities to earn money or generate productivity, but where people still need to eat. And under, as, under Islamic law, women bear no economic responsibility to anyone, not even themselves. Now, I watched a video not too long ago where a Muslim woman named Zara Faris in London used this very state of affairs as uh, an argument uh, as to why Muslim women do not need feminism. Uh, according to her, Islamic law does not specifically prohibit women from working. On the contrary, Muslim women can not only work under Islamic law, but they need not share their earned income with their families. Basically, if a Muslim woman has a job, the money she earns is hers and hers alone while her husband remains obligated to provide any and all economic support for the family, including the necessities his working wife requires. Now, I work with a man from Lebanon who confirmed that aspect of things for me. He has a wife and five children, and he works two jobs to support them. His wife stays at home, and that's exactly where he wants her. Not because he's a dominating, repressive, misogy misogynistic man, but because if she chose to work outside the home, he and their children have no right to the smallest share of her income, and yet he's still required to provide for his wife's basic needs. On the other hand, if she was working, daycare would become a necessity to the family, and it would be my co-worker who would be stuck with the bill. In other words, if his wife chose to work outside the home to pay for luxuries only she has any right to indulge in with that money, he would have to take a third job to make it possible for her to do so. And I suppose a lot of Muslim women think this is just great when times are easy. Under Islamic law, a woman with a job can technically allow her own children to starve, even if she has the money to feed them. If those children do starve, it's her husband who will be considered socially, morally, and legally accountable for failing to provide them the necessities of life. And while I doubt there are many women who would actually do this, it's just the way it works. In Afghanistan today, a woman with a job, a job she doesn't need, remember, is not just taking that job from a man, she's taking food out of the mouths of that man's wife and kids. If she takes a safe, easy job, as women are wont to do, then the man she displaces will have to take a more dangerous one. And if he's killed, his wife and kids have no means to support themselves. And this custom is so strict regarding this set of entitlements and obligations that in Afghanistan you can find 13-year-old boys whose fathers have been killed selling themselves as sex slaves to provide for their mother and sisters. Islam isn't right about shit. At the end of the day, Islam is the same transparent fucking scam as Western traditionalism. Muslim women get a free ride, while Muslim men and boys get shafted. That is what was being discussed by MRAs all the way back in 2013. It's disappointing to have to say this, but over the last half decade, the MGTOW community has gotten dumber. 
substantially fucking dumber. This community's collective understanding of female entitlement, male disposability, and gynocentric society has regressed. As a community primarily focused on intellectual enlightenment about the human condition, we have moved backwards. This is not some new revelation. Everything I've talked about in this video is information that we should have already known off by heart at this point. But instead, seven years on from Girl Rights What's video, we have supposedly red pill men running around like retards parroting stupid internet catchphrases like Islam is right about women. I mean, where the fuck did this idea even come from? The Western myth of Islamic patriarchy is entirely predicated on lies being spread by affluent Western feminist activists. It is the very same feminist lie about patriarchy and female oppression that we immediately recognize as total horseshit when that lie is told about the Western thoughts living in our own backyard. But for some reason, when those very same Western feminists tell the very same lies about Islamic patriarchy and the oppression of Muslims, women, these supposedly red pill men will swallow that same feminist shit hook, line and sinker, opting for the starry-eyed belief that Islam must be some kind of utopian traditionalist paradise of hard patriarchy. It is not a paradise, it is a mirage. Muslim men are simpering, pussy-obsessed trad cucks, just like their Americhristian counterparts. Perhaps even more so if we include the most extreme, militant examples of the religion. After all, I doubt there are many modern Christians willing to blow themselves up on the promise of 72 virgins in the afterlife. Correspondingly, Muslim women are greedy, disloyal whores driven by the same innate instincts as every other woman. The mirage of hard patriarchy and family stability simply comes from the fact that the ideology of Islam, like most extreme ideologies, tends to flourish in harsh, resource-scarce environments. This is not a case of religious traditionalism come to save the day. It is just that in a second world economy like Indonesia, or a third world economy like Afghanistan, it is not so easy for a greedy whore to act on her hypergamous instincts. To paraphrase something that Girl Writes What says in her video, it is difficult to leverage others into giving you the entitlements that you'd like to enjoy when everybody is stuck living on the bottom tier of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We have long since studied the shift in Western cultural trends over the last century. As quality of life and economic freedom and reproductive control has increased, so too has the divorce rate. In the case of present-day Islam, we see this very same shifting cultural trend mirrored with perfect clarity across the economic stratification of different human societies and geographies in which these modern Muslims reside. From a few hundred Muslim divorces happening in third world Afghan cities like Kabul and Herat, to the 20% divorce rate of Muslims living in second world Indonesia, to the 31% divorce rate of Muslims living in first world America. This trend is clear as fucking day. It has absolutely nothing to do with some flavour of religious traditionalism being right about women. It has everything to do with the mechanisation effect. This is monkey branching 101, gentlemen. Women, Muslim or otherwise, are pretty much the same everywhere, driven by the same hypergamous reproductive instincts. All women are like that. She's got the means, she's got the motive, but due to the economic pressures of differing human environments, she doesn't always have the same opportunity. There isn't always a branch within her reach to swing for, but mark my words, she is always keeping one eye on what's happening further up the tree. And when that opportunity does present itself, she will act on it. Make no mistake, the innate inclination towards pussy pedestalization with the eventual goal of societal and civilizational protection and provision for women still exists in traditional Islam. Just like the West, Islamic marriage, particularly the financial aspects, are exceedingly gynocentric and skewed in women's favor. Divorce is absolutely permissible within Islam, Muslim women are divorcing, and that Islamic divorce rate is on the rise all across the globe, in America, in Indonesia, and yes, even in third world Afghanistan. What we are seeing here is a clear example of the mechanization effect and the economic demographic paradox. 
I know I quote this saying by Barbarossa quite a lot, but I think that's because it's just an axiom of truth which applies to virtually every MGTOW-related discussion on the aggregate societal cost of reproductive relationships. Culture is a function of biology, and the differences in culture that we see arise from a fixed human nature adapting to a variable environment. Biological human nature always precedes culture and ideology. Islam is no exception. It is not society's last hope, it is just different coloured ornamental wrapping paper over the top of the same old natural human reproductive proclivities. The fact is that far from idolisation of family structure and stability, marriage and subsequently divorce are treated so liberally and have been so streamlined within the framework of Islam that traditional Islamic marital law actually allows for straight up cash in hand prostitution. As this Daily Beast article eloquently puts it, the Muslim call girl who'll marry you first. Within the framework of traditional Islam, the man and the woman verbally agree to quote unquote marry. The compulsory Meher bride price acts as the prostitutional cash payment, they fuck, and then they both verbally agree to annul the marriage as little as two hours later. Given the fact that Islamic law also allows for polygyny, i.e. multiple simultaneous marriages, it seems to be consistent with Islamic law to even engage in this kind of transparent, street-level prostitution whilst married. Now, whilst I personally have no moral qualms with prostitution, I would hazard a guess that if you really are a traditional conservative looking for a way to save the sanctity of marriage and family, Islam may not be the solution you were hoping for. And further to the issue of transparent street-level prostitution, there is also the issue of mistresses. This same Islamic model of polygyny and transactional marriage also allows for formal arrangements of long-term prostitution where kept women or mistresses are financially supported by married men often with the hopes that her wealthy married sugar daddy will eventually replace his current primary wife with her. This is something that I couldn't find as much information online about, but I know that I Am Serious has written about this in the past and said that it was a very common practice, at least in the parts of Indonesia where he's lived. There are just so many aspects of Islamic culture which most people either don't understand or simply don't even know about. I mean, just look at this article from Pakistan. Tribal court in Sindhi finds 10-year-old boy for affair with married woman. Fucking Pakistan. This is a country where homosexual rape carries the death penalty, but a female pedophile can rape a 10-year-old boy, and it's the 10-year-old boy who gets fined for engaging in an affair with a married woman. No, please. Tell me again how Islam is right about women. You know what else is going on in Pakistan? Apparently, they're looking into birth control methods as a way to curb the fact that Pakistani women are having too many babies. Yes, contraceptive population control. Not in the United States of feminism, not even in Israel. This is the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, the third most populous Muslim country on earth, the extremist, theocratic state principally responsible for the formation and funding of the fucking Taliban. They want to leverage birth control methods to keep the fertility rate down. Look guys, these are not the droids you are looking for. Islam is not a new hope for traditionalism. It just isn't. I would hazard a guess that for most people here, your understanding of Islam has primarily been informed by two groups. A. Muslim practitioners who wish to paint their religion in the best possible light as a traditional framework focused on stability of the family unit, and b. Western feminists who wish to paint Islam as a system of patriarchal totalitarianism designed to suppress and subjugate women. Neither case is true. When you actually look at the facts, Islam is just the same old gynocentric shit sandwich where women get a free ride and men and boys get fucked over. There are no quick fixes to widespread societal problems, okay? You can't repeal the 19th, you can't put women back in the kitchen, and Islam is not right about women. 
Human nature is a fucked up thing which has been streamlined over many millions of years in the harsh reality of nature, with the ultimate psychological instinctual goal being survival and replication. For most of us living today in the first and second world, resource scarcity and survival aren't really pressing day-to-day -day issues. Technology has pulled us up by our bootstraps, but every new technological advancement also seems to allow some new fucked up underlying aspect of human nature to be expressed just that little bit more. And men, being the biologically disposable gender, tend to find themselves on the receiving end of this. For those of us with our eyes wide open, this can be a difficult reality to come to grips with. We live in a world that at best is completely indifferent towards male suffering, and at worst, outright fucking hates masculinity and everything it stands for. Nobody ever said that trying to go your own way in this world was going to be easy. There are no quick fixes, there are no turnkey solutions to solve society's problems. And I really don't think that parroting bullshit like Islam is right about women helps the situation at all. You know what this is? You know, you know what it really is? Islam is right about women is just another blue pill so that desperate, gullible men can go on clinging to the belief that maybe, just maybe, there is still hope for women and marriage after all.